Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, this is going to be one of those really detailed <clears throat> videos. It's an insider ties video. So, what I have to do is give you a little bit of background first. Um, was rapping with my um, a peer, Steve, on Twitter, and he was asking questions. We were going back and forth about, you know, marketing and. Adidas and um, resale, sneaker reselling. And I know a lot of the times everybody gets into this kind of heated discussion on the importance of sneaker resale, the size of the sneakerhead market. And what I was explaining when I was talking to him is that the idea of sneakerhead has to change drastically. And that people who are assuming that sneakerheads are these young kids, pimply faced kids that are just standing in line camping out for sneakers that mentality is what is hurting the sneaker business right now and that the sneaker business is mi missing out on a ton of opportunity because you have these analysts who think they know things because they have data or they think they have this data that confirms what they are pitching to these companies and that information is really wrong because it's based on a premise that hasn't been updated to account for the change in what a sneaker head is. It's no longer a small niche group. It's a much bigger group than people understand. Anybody want to talk to me about that, you can reach out to me and give me a call. All right. And uh, But I've written several articles on it, and I'll put them down in the description so you can go and click and read those articles where I explain this. And I'm not going to just speak on something that you would say, oh, well, what's your information? How do you know these things? I'm a reseller. But I'm not a reseller in the way that you guys probably think of resellers. There are a lot of people who are like me who understand that reselling exists in the general release market on shoes that are readily accessible. Now, how do I present to you information about this? And that's a long introduction, and I apologize for that because we don't have that much time to go into detail. I'm only going to try and keep this to a little bit under 10 minutes. I don't want to take a lot of your time. All right. The first thing is we're going to look at this in regard to Adidas. In a recent article, I wrote that brands can contact people like me. Now, there are probably not that many people like me. And learn how to predict their brand heat or the brand momentum based on the resale market. Now, I wrote that because in 2015, and I'm going to click over to this article and I'm going to put this article down here and I'll put it up here at the top over here over my head. It should pop up now um, where I was talking about how Nike had to combat Adidas because in 2015 is when Adidas's momentum really started to take off. Now, the reason I can say that is because I was selling Adidas shoes at the time that were general release shoes, the ZX Flux, no boost or anything else, simply Kanye wore these shoes. And all of a sudden, Adidas started turning the corner into a resale product. Now, it wasn't reselling on eBay and places like that. What I'm looking at is a different, completely different type of resale. I was selling the black elements, Adidas ZX Flux. If you look over here and you see two sales, $259. The ZX Flux was a $90 shoe. Actually, I think it was 85. I was selling this shoe at an average of what? 120 a pair. Now, we go down here. The same thing was happening for me with Hirachis. The, basically, a GR release was selling for much more than, you know, the retail price. Sorry about stuttering a little bit, but you have to go back and read this article. And it's down here to get what I'm saying there. But... In 2015, Adidas became a resale shoe. At that moment, had anybody in the market, even if you're analyzing point of sales data from the previous quarter, you would not have seen that Adidas was going to become a reselling shoe at all because people don't measure what's going on in resale. Now, I saw this with the ZX Flux. I began writing articles about it and explaining how Nike was going to have to counter this. All right. Now, to further prove a point, I'm going to give you guys more cement kind of information based on what I've done, because I think what happens is we'll say, oh, yeah, I killed this or I was doing this 
or this is what I do. I'm going to show you a chart. Now this chart that you're looking at is from 2011, 1001, 2011 to 901, 2013. So almost two years, but not quite. I'm going to scroll down here so you can see the bottom of this chart <clears throat> and look at the amount of money that was ordered product, uh, right under a million dollars. This is my resale store. All right, that's my resale store. Now, that's from, like I said, October 2011 to September 2013. So almost two years. So we're right at half a million dollars a year on a resale store, right? That's not something that should be taken lightly. When I make these things, these claims or I'm talking about something, it's important that I back it up for you. Now, at that point, Adidas was gaining ground. Not Adidas was gaining, gaining ground. I was just selling a lot of random stuff. I've always sell, sold a lot of random stuff. The resale market for me has never been built on hype releases. It's always been based on what's readily accessible. All right. Now, if I'm going to skip over to 2015, 2015, um, basically, let me make that bigger so you can see it. January 2015 to what is that? December 2015. Hopefully you can see it. You're going to have to make your video bigger. I'm going to scroll down and you can see my sales dropped about $200,000. And right around here, I was doing about $342,000 a year. But you see this steep drop right here. This has nothing to do with the resale business or sneaker business. This was a personal investment that I made that took a ton of money away from me. And it led to the last couple of years. In particular, 2017, I did absolutely no resale at all. So 2017, I didn't sell at all, and it is all stems from this moment. Now, let me get back to what I was talking about. Here at the end of 2016 is when Adidas began making this gigantic push, all right? So you see that. But to give you more detailed information, I need to show you which shoes were selling at resale that weren't hype shoes because the importance of this video is not in the fact that I sold a Yeezy. Yeezys hadn't even dropped yet. So we're talking 2015, 2016, right? So what I did was I opened my Amazon account back up this week simply to do this video. And this is where the meat of the discussion is going to take place. What you see here is from 6, 7, 2016 to 6, 5, 2018. I didn't sell in 2017. I don't use Amazon. You can see here clearly that there are no spikes in the chart. They're like really small spikes on things that were like kind of trickling out that were old. And that's all the way back in. Let's see what this says. It's like 2017, August 16, 2017. It was like something that I had that I just threw out there that was just old. I did not do any resale in 2017. But when you look back here, from June, what, 2016, all the way to here, this was an Adidas market. That's when everything switched. At that point, I had done, what, $163,000. Now, I'm running out of time. I only got about a minute left to get this to you guys. The detailed page breakdown goes like this, and I'm going to scroll through it, and this is where I'm wrapping up. If you want to see more information on this, then ask me because my account is going to close soon. But check out the basically the price that I was selling Adidas for on in resale for general release items. EQT support ADV 159. All right. We can keep going down this list and you'll see Kyrie Adidas EQT again 159. Adidas EQT 159. And I'm just pointing, but I know you can't see it. But this is what I was trying to give Adidas NMD 184.98. That's where everything changed. We can talk about this in detail, and I'll get into it much more if you ask. See you guys later. Peace.